Hi everyone, uh, now we would like to uh, share you our journey in the field of gamification and uh, I am Kotan Adjurj, a research psychologist and also a community manager at Pronovix and uh, in the first part uh, of uh, our presentation I will speak about a bit uh, the theoretical background of gamification and after that I will uh, present the gamification framework and in the second part my co-presenter uh, Gergő Kurutz will uh, speak about uh, a Drupal example what we put uh, together for this uh, session. So, what is gamification? Definitely gamification is a fancy, uh, um, a commonly used uh, word nowadays, uh, but uh, what is it? So at first uh, let me tell you a story. Um, maybe you know, Gabe Z uh, you know Gabe Zeherman, who is a really famous uh, gamification designer, and they uh, put together a research in uh, the USA where they asked uh, uh, the younger generation, why are they not use, uh, why are they not, do not want to uh, drive cars as much as the generations before them? So when they asked them, they just found out that uh, the answer was that uh, they can't use their devices during driving. Uh, so instead of changing their behavior uh, of uh, how they use uh, the devices, they simply uh, choose do not uh, drive. So it's pretty interesting that uh, we are uh, just um, follow our pleasure beast instead of uh, changing our behavior. But we can use a lot of other examples, for example, then uh, we use our devices every day and 20% uh, of us uh, check uh, the devices in every 10 seconds. So it's pretty much, if you just put it together, it uh, takes a lot of time in one day. So. Also, if you just think about how you work, uh, usually we use a lot of different screens, uh, not just one screen, we, uh, we uh, also check our uh, different devices every time. Um, so we can say that there is a kind of engagement crisis now and um, it's getting hard to keep people's attention. So it uh, could be a good solution to use gamification for this. So if we could design something uh, good, uh, maybe we could grab uh, people's attention. So, still before we define gamification, uh, we have to define what is not gamification because there is a lot of misunderstanding beside this. Uh, first of all, uh, it's not a game. Yeah, it's definitely not a game because uh, we just use the game element uh, in uh, the design framework not, and we do not want to create a game. So then, uh, is it a product? No, it's not a product, it's a process. So when we create a gamification, we can say that we finished it. Uh, we actually creating step after steps and for this we creating a process where uh, somebody can uh, follow up what's happening on a site or, or somewhere. Uh, it's also not about badges. When you see somewhere badges, you always think about, oh yeah, that's gamification. But yeah, that's part of ga the, the gamification framework, but it's not gamification. If you just use badges, it's, uh, it's boring. We all know that if you uh, get badges, uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of cool at first, but uh, after the second time or fourth time, and if it uh, didn't give you any more meaning, it's, uh, it's just, just about badges uh, and not about gamification. And yeah, we have to know that if we add uh, gamification for any product, it can't uh, fix uh, if it's bad. So then, what it is? 
Uh, this is all very new, so uh, there is no one uh, universally accepted definition, uh, but let me offer you the following after Kevin Warbach. Uh, so, gamification, the use of game elements and game design techniques in a non-game context. So, and what's the goal of gamification? Definitely, the goal of gamification is using game mechanics to engage audiences to solve problems. And uh, how can we uh, use uh, this kind of thing to create something good? How could, uh, could we create something awesome? There are a lot of uh, gamification frameworks out there. And uh, when I looked them through, uh, I found uh, the 6D. Uh, this is the framework of uh, Kevin Werbach. And uh, I think it's pretty good. It's really easy. And uh, if you are new in the area, you can uh, use it to validate your uh, framework uh, easily because it uh, gives you questions to every step. So you can check if your uh, ideas are good or if your ideas give solution for, for everything. Uh, and basically, you can create the basic steps for your uh, framework, and after that, yeah, you have to work uh, uh, more on that to, to, to finish it. But yeah, this is a great first step for it. Um, also, I wanted to share that uh, we want, we do not want to. Uh, uh, mm, tell you everything about gamification is just uh, uh, just our story we wanted to share with you and uh, and maybe it's uh, give you great ideas hopefully so this framework contains six steps and every step has a specific question which could help to keep the focus on the goal so the first one is uh, define business objectives for this, you have to answer two questions uh, carefully. What is our system designed for and what's our goal? Um, here are a few concrete steps you can uh, take. So take a list and rank the possible objectives uh, about the goals. And in the second step, elim eliminate all those things on the list which are not useful or you think it's not uh, so important to include and uh, after that just justify it. So, second step, delineate target behaviors. Uh, uh, think about uh, what are the target behaviors, what are the win state of the gamers in gamer terms, so what will be your gamers win terms. Uh, figure out what the success metrics for achieving the goals of this uh, gamified system. And based on that, you can uh, measure it. Uh, for example, uh, with the uh, monthly average users or the daily average, uh, based on the daily average users uh, ratio. Or if you already have a site of what you like to gamify, you have a lot, a lot of data, maybe based on Google Analytics, so you can use it how to uh, how to um, set up your, your system, how, what kind of uh, win states you have on the side. Uh, third step, describe your players. Uh, definitely uh, you have to answer here, how could you describe the behavior of the target group? What do you know about your players? If you already have uh, a site or, or you already have a community, you have a lot of data about them. Uh, you maybe know a lot about their socio-demographics, uh, so definitely their age, uh, the, uh, their where they come where, where they come from or what are they know what their specialties and all these kind of things and uh, this is pretty good if you know that it's a good start uh, but uh, if we are speaking about gamification the most important part is to speak about motivation um, so if you could describe your players based on motivation uh, it's the best thing there are loads of frameworks for uh, for motivation also 
there are two ones, uh, two uh, which I put it on my slide. Uh, this one is Amy O'Kame's framework. Uh, I prefer this one uh, because she included uh, a lot of things in it. Um, and um, if you know uh, the motivational goals, um, you can choose it uh, from the words. And basically, based on that, you can uh, choose which is more important for your site. So it's a pretty easy framework to, to for, a, for a starter. Uh, the second one is a pretty famous one. Uh, th uh, this is uh, Bartels of uh, player types. Uh, this is famous, but I think it's not as useful as, as the other one because uh, he, he created this framework in the beginning of the 90s based on um, mod users, maybe you know that game, and uh, multi-user dungeons. So it's, uh, it's an old one. He validated time after time, so it's, uh, it's, it looks like it's good, but uh, it's more about r games than uh, about gamification. So, for fourth thing is device activity loops. There are two activity loops which is uh, really important. For the first is the engagement route. Uh, this is the micro level. Um, for this, you have to answer the question, does my ID has a solution for each state? So, do you have um, a great motivation for your player to took the first action? For the first action, uh, do you give the, a really great feedback to uh, give them a, a motivation to go on and on again? So, the first motivation give the first action and the fig that uh, create uh, something great which uh, motivated the player to, to go back again. Uh, but this is just small task. This is, this is just about small task. If we speak about the progression loop, uh, this is um, more about the macro level. So uh, what we have to uh, think about uh, that uh, there are different states uh, for every users on our uh, uh, on our site or in our product so there are newbies there are regular users and there are enthusiasts and you have to think about it that uh, the, their needs are different for uh, the newbies we have to think about the onboarding process so they have to give something that uh, it helps them to, to get inside uh, the, the project. And uh, the regular users also need to learn something new, which uh, gave them more, more motivation to stay in. And uh, yeah, definitely you have to think about that there will be a few people who, uh, who will be enthusiastic about your product or your site or whatever you just do. And uh, you have to uh, give them that kind of motivation to, uh, to follow up that mastery level. The fifth, don't forget the fun. This is a, um, an interesting one, I think, because um, obli obviously we all think that yeah, gamification is fun, so uh, why we put this here, but no, gamification is not always fun. It's fun if we put together uh, some, uh, something which is fun, uh, if we think about it. If we just use the PBR triad, points, badges and leaderboards, it's just boring because yeah I got some points after that I got badges and somebody just put me on the leaderboard it's not fun anymore and uh, you have to add the uh, content to it so if you fill it out with something uh, interesting if you give a journey to the player if you uh, uh, give a meaningful content uh, to to uh, your product uh, is it's the most important thing so think about uh, the context is the most important. And in the sixth state, deploy the appropriate tools. So when you know, when you could answer all these questions uh, in the last state, uh, you have to think about it, what kind of game elements fit the best to your concept. So 
check the toolkit. There are different toolkits. Uh, it also depends on what kind of basic tool you want to use. Uh, forget the PBL triad. Uh, you, you can use it definitely, but think about it, how to use it. Uh, concentrate more on the experience part. And uh, don't forget that the elements are not the game. Not all rewards are fun. We can give rewards for everybody, but uh, if you, for example, there is a site when you just check in and uh, if you spend there more than 10 seconds, you get a badge uh, for this. And it's, okay, come on, I didn't do anything. So it's, it's, it's not so fun to get a badge for a thing like this. Uh, so not, uh, not all rewards are fun, but not all fun is rewarding. So uh, it's, it's also true in that way. And uh, think about the journey of the player. Um, we think about uh, to create a hypothetic example site. So we gave a name to this uh, Drupal with the Knowledge Share Center. Yeah, it's pretty long. It's uh, not so fun, but, uh, but that's the name of it. And um, we wanted to share with you two different process. Um, uh, we wanted to make the onboarding process for this example site easier. And uh, in the second part, uh, we wanted to support the validity of uh, the knowledge base of this site. So like uh, how to rate a video based on an experience, uh, how easy to search on this site, or how you get uh, some feedback on this site. And we, if we go through um, on this framework, uh, we can say that our system is designed for sharing your uh, knowledge in a Drupal video center. Uh, a, in the second place, uh, in the, the target beha behavior is to share your knowledge. Uh, we want uh, players like uh, Drupalist uh, from the open source community or, or everybody from the open source community. Uh, in, the, in the device uh, loop uh, part, uh, we want uh, them to start easily and they want it to, uh, them to worse to use it. And uh, learn and share is always fun. So. Uh, we wanted to create a, a kind of process which could be uh, fun for them uh, in that part. And we wanted to use for uh, this process uh, uh, the Drupal. So from this part, uh, my co-presenter will share you uh, this site and we'll show how we implemented it. So hi everyone, um, I'm going to switch off the presentation and show you uh, an example site. Um, we actually tried to give it a shorter name, it's Drupal Speakers, it's just a basic theoretical example of how we can apply this, um, this framework to Drupal. Um, our idea was to uh, look around the Drupal module uh, ecosystem and, and see if there are any kind of modules or if there's any kind of tool provided by Drupal that can help us with uh, applying this, uh, these, uh, well, these steps that we have devised. Um, <clears throat> um, and as uh, Kata said, the, the thing that we wanted to focus on is the onboarding process to make it easier and uh, to support the validity of the user knowledge base. Um, we have used a lot of modules, but the most important ones that help us, that, that we have found uh, to be helpful in achieving these uh, goals are the following modules. Uh, there's this profile complete percentage module uh, that is going to be helpful for the onboarding uh, process and uh, 
to, to validate uh, the, the, um, the feasibility and the, and the usefulness of the uh, user knowledge base, we have several uh, a set of modules. Um, we have um, made great use of the voting API module, and there are two other modules that build upon the voting API module. It's, one is the vote up-down module, the other is the vote up-down terms module. Uh, I will explain it later what, how we use these. And we have a small custom module to glue some things together. I don't want to go into two. If you are interested, I can show you some code. It's like 100 lines of code that I had to put together to achieve some things that I could not with just modules, but it's, uh, it can be boring. So maybe at the end, I will show you some code. Um, <clears throat> um, so uh, the concept was to have a video sharing site. Um, and for that, we need two crucial things. One is the user profile, obviously, and so that it has meaningful information. And the other crucial um, um, thing are the videos. Obviously, that makes up the content of the site. Um, so we have videos and user profiles. Um, how do we uh, make videos uh, besides uh, that they show us information uh, about a certain topic? How do we make them uh, um, even more valuable? Uh, so we thought about giving some meta information on the videos and, and making use of this meta information uh, when we uh, navigate on the site or when we search for content. And for that, the simplest solution seemed to be to use tags, uh, simple taxonomy terms. Um, and for that, we devised a system for which we use the voting, which, uh, for the, the voting modules. Um, and uh, but I will show, show these things uh, in a few seconds, and it will make more sense. So uh, by default, we see a listing of videos. Uh, it's very simple. It's just, uh, it's actually not a view, but um, I will come back to that later. Um, we have tags on the videos, and the interesting part is that you can see numbers after the tags. Um, so our thinking was that, uh, what if we make a system where users can kind of peer review videos and rate the, the tags that are on the videos so that that way if a lot of people watch videos and rate the tags, the relevancy of certain tags can increase on a video and then, for example, if a video has, I don't know, what, what examples we have here. For example, we have this uh, entity with Drupal 7 and the entity API video. Um, it has these tags, and um, it seems that uh, it's more relevant in the entity API th uh, topic than in the OOP topic, or whatever tags are going to be used or put on it later on. So, um, and uh, yeah, how do we make use of this? Um, we can get to listing pages. Uh, that show us, through the tags, we, we can link to listing pages that uh, show us uh, only videos tagged with those certain tags and uh, order them based on the relevancy or the weight of, of, uh, of that certain text. So this, this listing shows, of, shows us a list of videos tagged with Entity API and the topmost videos are, are rated the most relevant in the Entity API topic. So, um, yes, um, so in order, in order to be able to use the, the peer review system, you need to log in, and when you get to a video, um, you've, you can get to a, a voting widget, but only after you have watched the video, so, uh, because we thought that, uh, uh, sorry, because we thought that users will be able to only give a relevant vote when they watch the video. So we wanted to make sure that uh, they won't vote on videos be, uh, without watching the video. So we made sure that the widget only appears after, after watching a video. Uh, still one minute. Uh, sorry, let, let, 
let the video finish. And, and when the video finishes, the voting widget will appear, and then we can, we can decide if, uh, if we think that these tags are relevant or not in this video. And in this way, uh, contribute. Yeah, the widget appeared. Um, after watching the video, I think that it's relevant to have an OOP tag on it, so I, I would like to increase the vote. And this resulted in, yeah, you can see the, the, the weight of that tag on that video increased. So what is the meaning of all this? Um, 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 so this way we can, we can make sure or, or have a system in place that uh, kind of ensures that uh, videos are tagged with only relevant sk uh, skills or tags and that, uh, that it has an effect on search or listing. Mm. Um, so this, this is kind of about supporting the validity of the user knowledge base. Um, and we still have the onboarding uh, process to cover. For that, we have the profile completeness module. It's just a, a simple solution. It shows you a block and suggests uh, uh, user profile fields to fill in so that you can increase the completeness of your profile. It's a very basic solution, um, but a lot of uh, sites out there uh, implement a similar thing. Such an example could be LinkedIn, um, where they have this uh, little circle um, graphic in the sidebar where it shows you how filled your profile is and based on that it tries to categorize you as an expert or professional or whatever. Um, the purpose of that is to, um, um, to nicely guide the user to fill in their profiles. Uh, in other words, to give more information about them so that other users of, this, of the service can can get relevant information about each other, which, which is beneficial for everyone, for the users of the site and for the runners of the site as well. Um, hmm. um, as you can see, there's only one suggestion shown at a time. Uh, I think I should log out and log in with another user because it, it's a pretty much filled in profile. Um, yeah, the admin user has only 40% complete profile. Uh, now it shows the birthday field to field. It showed the user, uh, mm, the user picture before. Um, uh, so as you can see, it suggests only one field. It's, it's always a, a good idea to um, keep it simple. So suggesting more than one field could confuse the user. Um, if you still want to have a control over uh, the order in which users fill their fields, uh, that, that would be a good idea to extend on that, uh, that goal. Uh, I, I guess it, ca it is possible to extend this module so that you can give uh, weight or ordering for the profile fields and then they, the suggestions appear in that order and not randomly as it is happening now. Uh, ordering the filling of user profile fields can also be useful uh, yet again um, in the sense that uh, as a site owner, some information might be more valuable on the user's profile than others, and, and hence you can use ordering to, to get the more important information earlier than, than the rest. Mm. Yes. Uh. Yeah, the voting widget that, that is provided by the vote up down module and vote up down terms module. Um, shall I go into some technical details or is anyone interested in that? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm logged in as the admin. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, just a second. So uh, I. Th mm, it's not here. Um, so this, what, what this voting up down terms module does, it allows you to vote on terms that are put on nodes. So you are actually voting on terms that are 
on the nodes, not on not directly on the term entities, which is an important uh, which is an important detail here because uh, because we want to vote on the terms on a certain video and not on the term, which can be used on more than one video. Um, and this needed some patching to the module, which I will contribute back, but that's, that's not that important now. Um, uh, one thing that is interesting, I think, is that how I uh, achieved that the widget appears only after uh, ending the video. Uh, which obviously has a purpose that I have described before. Uh, YouTube videos has an API, a JavaScript API that you can make use of. Um, so uh, once the vid uh, originally I hide the voting widget um, with this part. Um, I know I, I load the YouTube JavaScript API and then hide the uh, voting widget. Um, and uh, after that, I make use of the, the events of the, of the video player. And we have an on-state on change uh, 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 event triggered. And I have an event handler for that called on-player state change. And it can uh, broadcast different events. One of that events is the ended event, which basically tells the event listener that, uh, that the video stopped playing. I, I really want to react only on that event when, when the video stopped. So here, I, here is where I, I'm doing that. Uh, and once the video is done, I'm showing the widget. So it's, it's really a simple JavaScript solution. Uh, what I could not solve with views was the main listing page, or actually all the listing pages. Um, because I wanted to include in the ordering the, the voting on the terms. And it would have been really complicated or actually even impossible to do it with views because voting API were not uh, uh, providing um, that information to make use of in views. So that I, I couldn't get any information through which I could order the, the results. So I had to make a custom listing page. And Drupal is really helpful in even this case, because we have entity field query, uh, entity field queries in core, which is a really nice um, uh, class or interface to, to make uh, uh, queries against Drupal's uh, database. It's really easy to structure it, make use of it. Uh, so I basically just uh, made sure that I, I'm listing only videos, uh, the video content type, which is obviously of node entity type, only the, the ones that are published. I want to, wanted to page it. Mm, and um, <clears throat> here is um, the part that is trying to make use of the tagging. So if I'm on a listing page where I'm filtering on a certain tag, I want to include the, that term in, in, the, in the query. Um, for that, I had to add the tag to the query and do the altering through that tag. So I tagged the query and then altered the query um, and just joined the voting API, uh, voting API modules provided information and, and ordered based on that. Um, I have also overridden where the links of terms point at, so that instead of uh, the taxonomy listing pages, they point at these uh, custom listing pages. And uh, yeah, basically that's, that's all the custom things that I had to do. One thing that I forgot to mention is that how user profiles look like, um, because it's important. So if I visit a certain user's profile, I can see a skills uh, um, um, section here. These skills section basically make use of the same terms that are being used on uh, tags as, uh, as tags on the videos. Uh, so this is the connection between uh, um, a user and, and the videos. So this way I can see um, 
if a user has certain skills, and if I go to that, uh, if I click on that skill, it gets me to that uh, listing page where I can see the videos uh, related to that skill or tag. Uh, so this is a nice way to, to help the navigation of, of users. And of course, I have this small listing of videos uploaded by that user. Uh, so it's a really basic, really um, simple example of what you can achieve with Drupal. Um, uh, if you want to apply gamification, obviously there are a lot of room, there's a lot of uh, room for improvement. Um, mm, uh, there are two things to keep in mind when you are applying, uh, technically applying gamification. You should have a, a long-term plan. So you should have a, 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 a plan for three months for the features that you want to implement. Uh, but, but you also have to keep in mind that you don't have to implement everything at first. You can do it incrementally or gradually. Um, and, and still achieve your goals. So onboarding is the most important. I think we can agree on that. Well, it's, in, really, important. it's really important. So if you focus on onboarding first, and then you put out your site, uh, it, can, it can already increase your achieving your goals. So if, 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 if uh, pulling in users was one of your primary goals, then, then certainly on, onboarding can help it. Uh, improving on the onboarding process can help it that and uh, and you can always add other gamification features later on and um, i think uh, that is everything that i wanted to show you um we actually have some questions for you or let's let's start with your questions and then we also have some questions Definitely, at first, uh, we can see that what his goal. So, at first, we can ask him uh, what his goal, and after it, if it fits with gamification, we can uh, set up uh, that how much uh, plus value uh, uh, it uh, we could include with, with gamification. So, for example, with numbers, we can say uh, that previ with previous res uh, researches we can show that with, th with this kind of gamification we could increase the onboarding uh, process uh, with that amount uh, on your side. And uh, based on your, uh, for example, Google uh, Analytics, we can compare it that, okay, so now uh, you have this on your site, or if it's a new site, we can uh, use um, basic knowledge uh, about that community, and uh, we can say that how much uh, uh, so, what uh, what um, what would be the best uh, things uh, from it? So, d definitely, at first we have to create something uh, which uh, proves that it would be better with gamification, and uh, uh, yeah, definitely we have to discuss it. Uh, the whole process, how much uh, does uh, the whole process cost? Because uh, at first, we if it's an already existing site. Um, we have to um, look it through, measure it, how to put, implement everything, how much time is it, and if it's uh, worth uh, for uh, the customer or not, uh, he has to decide it. So um, it's, um, it's a longer story, so we have to tell him or her everything in the beginning, and if he see that, uh, oh, what's the steps for, uh, for every state, and when we reach that goal that, okay, from now you will have a starting gamification thing on your site and every month we can put something new to it uh, to keep it going. So mm -hmm. something like this. Okay. And did you ever run from the from the business cases of the products where you can say to the customer, well, I don't think that gamification is good for you. Are there any such specific cases? Specific cases? Hmm. Or criteria? Criteria, whatever, any kind of. 
I think we, so there are a few uh, people who think that, for example, badges or points or things like that are uh, good as gamification. So for example, if you want something like this, and we agree that this kind of thing will increase his uh, site visit or something like that, we can't promise this, this part. So, uh, and so when, when something like this come up, we definitely have to share that uh, if you want something like this, uh, so just include points or badges on your site, we can't promise anything to you, so maybe it's not the best solution to include it. Uh, from I can say this from a gamification perspective, but uh, from otherwise, uh, I think we can add gamification almost for everything except the game. <laughs> but uh, if you have users, if if you yeah definitely if you have users or if, if you if you want a community to to do something, uh, but. Uh, you have to think about it uh, if it's necessary. So it, I think it's not uh, necessary every time to, to add the gamification thing to every site because if the mm, community works uh, uh, really good uh, without uh, the gamification part, it's, it's, it's an unnecess unnecessary thing. But uh, if it could increase or if it's uh, efficient uh, to, to increase uh, some part of the site, Any other questions? Um, we have some. <laughs> so we have some questions for you all. So we are really interested that, do any of you have um, a gamification uh, verb before? Or did you do anything? Or uh, did you have customers who want uh, something like this? You, you have a kind of? Yes, kind of. I'm trying to convince them that it's for the community. But that was a bit unsuccessful. It is a rather large communication company from the Middle East. And they case came to know as well the thing that uh, this is putting their uh, customers into the kindergarten and I don't think that this would be approved for us. So this is the reason why I'm asking you. Do I see. Have you shown them examples, successful examples of uh, gamified experiences? Because there, there are such things on the internet. Like uh, LinkedIn is an example of a uh, basic gamification aspect. So, uh, yeah, what uh, just Gergo mentioned that uh, in some cases, for example, we think about uh, gamified uh, sites like uh, where is loads of leaderboards, points, badges, and uh, all these kind of things, and, and not just badges, but a lot of uh, how you can experience points, and, uh, uh, and there are loads of quests on it, so basically just like a game. Uh, but there are sites uh, uh, which implement uh, uh, sophisticatedly just uh, nice things. Uh, for example, Drupal.org is also a nice example for gamification because uh, if you d we think about karma or we just think about uh, uh, um, how you uh, contribute to modules or, or uh, Drupal 8 or something like that, it's also that kind of thing. So we, we don't have to uh, call it uh, or um, design it uh, game-like to, to make it uh, gamified. Game or gamified. Or A B testing, yeah. Something that has a price and so on and so on. And this is the 
change the mood that I need to commit every time I say, well, I can give some badges, do some ratings, bring some points to the system, make some giveaways. It's always considered as, as some kind of a giveaway action of the, most of the time. And this is the switch that is hard to flip. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's another site that is an interesting example of gamification, um, freelancer.com, which is a pretty serious business. Basically, it's a, it's a job marketplace where employers and freelancers can find each other. And it has, well, it has a great deal of gamification applied. Um, obviously, there are these elements that are very game-like, like experience and badges and whatever, but they have a purpose, they are meaningful. They have you, uh, advantages over others if you collect the badges, like, uh, I don't know, there are certain rewards that uh, allow you to place more bids on jobs, or, I don't know, uh, have some discount on transfer rate, or whatever. Um, so, I think uh, when you explain it to the customer that these things um, can be used to give benefits to the users of the service and to, to the provider of the service as well, that, that can be a switch or a selling point, maybe. Um, um, Based on what you have seen and what you have discussed, uh, would anyone be interested in a longer workshop uh, about uh, gamification and, and particularly gamification uh, connected with Drupal, like a theoretical and practical technical workshop a few hours long? Would that be interesting for anyone? Uh, not for now. Not for now, not for now in general, in any kind of future general, event. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Well, um, I think that's it. Thank you for your attention.